Welcome back, Bench Warmers. This is the Far to the Bench. We have a special bonus episode for you all. We have my longtime friend, one of the loudest, most eccentric people I know, Jeremy Fear. What's with going on, baby? Don't worry. What's going on? Thank you guys for having me Jim, on. Jimmy's going to be a part of this, too. He's not your golf connoisseur. <laughs> happy Gilmore. Happy he's, Gilmore. He's more of a happy Gilmore guy, guy but we have... Shooter McGavin, actually. I'm a Shooter McGavin Shooter guy. Shooter McGavin but we, ha we have our uh, Masters expert here tonight. Yeah. We'll, we'll give a little bit of background about Jeremy, because Jeremy is an original bench warmer. All of that's Jimmy's center of attention days. Is that right? Yeah, I love Jimmy. I love Jimmy's center of attention days. Um, he had some good takes, some hot takes, which have carried over to now the far end of the bench, which I will, yeah. I will say. It's, hey, Nico has the same too. He has just as many hot takes. You can, you can always count on Jeremy to uh, come in with his Wednesday. Um, what the fuck did you say that <laughs> comments? So, um, a little bit of background for Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy, I don't, I don't know if Jimmy was on the team then, but me and Jeremy first met in middle school. He was on our little league football team for our Vegas trip, yep. and yes, uh, it's been I all. Was, I was there. Jimmy I was, was there. He was in Miami too. For, yeah, we were. Uh, yeah. That was when I first met you. Was Dude, in Miami. That was insane. That, they, so, the, oh, that was insane. Oh my god. You want to tell them about when we went oh, to Alabama? They, the, the, the Vegas oh, I didn't, Alabama. I didn't go to that one. There, there were so many weird trips on our little league football team. That's where I first met Jared. <laughs> I've done DECA with Jeremy. I've done a lot of different things. He's a big what? Hoosier guy, big uh, Ohio I State fan. We went to fan. Nationals, right? In Nationals, yeah, that was, was pretty well, sweet. Yeah, went to Nationals, yeah. which was a lot of fun, man. So you're a Hoosier guy. So let's let's yes, start. Sir. Let's start. I know it's a Master Special, yes, sir. but let's let's talk about your college football team. Yes, sir. Here. Yes, sir. The Hoosiers no. just knocked off Michigan this week after taking down Penn State. Penn State a few weeks back. What what are your thoughts on the uh, direction of uh, Indiana football? So um, for a lot of people that are not Hoosier fans or have no idea who, where Indiana is, because that's where the majority of people have no idea where the state is. Um, you know, Indiana is one of those one of those uh, programs that has always been on the cusp of just almost ready to win, almost you know almost there, taking teams to double, triple over time. You look at the last, I don't know, Jimmy. If you look at the last uh, Indiana versus Michigan. Games. I think there was like two double overtime games. I went to one of them, heartbreaker. Um, but Indiana sports has always been on the cusp of stuff. Um, there's been some dark days. There's been some good days. But, um, you know, last year was kind of the first year of Indiana finally kind of breaking out almost. Mm -hmm. uh, we went, I believe, uh, eight and four. Five, Jimmy, is that right? Eight and five? Yeah, somewhere around yeah. there. That was um, Tom Allen finally kind of like getting his yep. recruiting and everything yep. going. So Indiana didn't do a national search. They took Tom Allen, who used to be the head, the defensive coordinator at Ole Miss, made him head coach of Indiana for um, the bowl game. Um, but, you know, Indiana was on the cusp last year. We were, I would say, two to three plays away from winning ten games. Mm -hmm. um, and, and we play, and I told Nico this uh, earlier in the week, but the Big Ten East is – Arguably, next to the SEC West, one of the hardest divisions in college football. Mm -hmm. um, they play Ohio State, Michigan, Penn State, Michigan yep. State every year. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a tough conference. But Indiana this year um, they had a lot of returners. They had Michael Penix Jr. at quarterback who was he's, injured last year. He's but the difference. He's the difference. Jim, like you said, Jimmy, he is the difference. Um, but they got Stevie Scott running back, absolute animal. Um, Watt Fillier, 1,000-yard. I think he was almost a 2,000-yard receiver last year. Mm -hmm. uh, he was up for... Um, a couple of awards, but the, the the big the difference between a lot of teams in college football, and this is just kind of in general, um, what separates really average teams from good teams and good teams from great teams um, is the defense and what what are the secondary is. I mean, you look at look at Clemson for example. Clemson last week gave up forty seven to mm -hmm. Notre Dame or whatever. So, um, which oh, I was so upset about that game. I can't I can't stand both teams as a family's Ohio State fan. We won't talk about that game, but. Um, Indiana first game, you know, people if you just want to watch a fun game, I don't even care if you're like you like football or not, that oh, that game was out of control. Michael Penix at the end of the game, first of all, the Tom Allen the balls to go for two oh at gosh, the end the of the game. Yeah. That so nice. that was nuts. Um but you know, Penn State was a big monumental win. That changed the dynamic of the whole season. Um uh, we we kinda had a hung, hangover game almost, but we we took care of Rutgers and then last week was a really dominant performance. Uh, performance I haven't seen from Indiana football in, since I've been a fan. Yeah, um, I mean Jim Harbaugh is on the cusp. It, his job's very hot seat right mm -hmm. now. It's it's very very tough in Michigan right now. Like we said, that first week against Penn State, we watched that game together. And I'll tell you one thing, man. If you don't know Jeremy personally, the dude was losing his shit. Shirt <laughs> off, running around the place, losing his mind. Nothing gets Jeremy going quite like a <laughs> double overtime win against the number eight team in the country yeah. and winning in winning in the fashion they did. But yeah. um, Indiana's on the cusp. Um, 
NCAA basketball coming up soon. I know, yes, you, sir. I know you guys are a basketball school first and foremost. So that would be a yes, lot of fun. Well, we're starting to transition. I don't know. Now we're kind of with these wins. I don't know. We might be football now. I don't know. I mean, you, yeah. You're starting to kind of show yourself in the Big Ten. I think personally the Big Ten's best conference in college football top to bottom. Thank with you. Northwestern, Minnesota, Wisconsin all being pretty tough. And then Big Ten, uh, obviously Ohio State, Michigan, yeah. Michigan mm-hmm. State, all the all the powerhouses, but mm-hmm. they are kind of showing themselves. Mm-hmm. And Tom Allen, that defense, that's what Minnesota did last year. They mm-hmm. had a crazy defense. That's why they kind of sucked this year. Whitfield Jr. Yeah. I think was on there. Who's he played for now? Who's He's he? a buck. He's, buck. Yeah, He's probably yeah. going to be defensive rookie of the year yeah. in the NFC because the Cardinals can't figure out Isaiah Simmons. But like, yeah, Tom Allen has done wonders. For, that's what you yeah. want when you're. Um, it's the same thing that North Carolina did with Matt Brown, where you bring in yeah. an established guy who can get get through to the players, and then you finally have a quarterback who can make plays. That's kind of what they've been missing. They, they're even on both sides. They're one of the most top to bottom, one of the most pure teams, like Agreed. through and through. Agreed. They're, Agreed. Tough schedule coming up, though. Michigan, tough schedule. Michigan State, Ohio State, back to back. How, how do you feel about your chances against Ohio State? Oh, both, both on the road. We're, so We're going to skip over Michigan State because we all hate Mel Tucker. So Wait, 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 uh, wait, 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 wait. See, see this is where... You guys aren't aren't knowledgeable about Indiana. We look ahead. We're uh, on the road. We got a big noon kick. Game day might be there for the first time since I was a freshman at Indiana. So um, we'll see. At Michigan State's a trap game. You think that they're garbage? They they just we they got our number. They got our number. That's fair. Um, yeah, in between Michigan and Ohio State, that's a, that is a trap game. Though. It is a true. trap game. Um, but you know, hey. Whether we win that, first of all, win that game, that's a program changer game. That's a program winning game. Mm-hmm. Do I think we're going to win that game? No. I think Justin Fields is probably not one, but the second best quarterback in the in the country. Their receivers are legit. Olave, at the number two, he's a beast. They have Garrett Wilson, five star, he's a beast. And they got um, Jackson Smith, uh, I forget, Jigba or something like that. Mm-hmm. He's a beast. So, look, it's going to be tough. They have weapons all over the field. Um, I would like to see Indiana just make it an uh, interesting game. Interesting game. Yeah, if Indiana yeah. wins that game for sure, we're we're talking about Indiana in the Final Four. I mean, top four. That's that. That'd be that'd we be still so gonna play Wisconsin. Yeah. Don't we? Don't, don't, don't don't say that because Maryland and Wisconsin towards the end of the season is not gonna be easy. Um, but if you, if you beat Ohio State, though, top. you definitely are top top eight at least. Yeah, and that gets you. In oh, the we beat we, we beat Ohio State. I think we're in the top four. They're top ten now. Yeah. They're ten. They're ten at, at the yeah. moment. So yeah. Michigan State, they'll probably go eight. And then it would be probably eight versus three for the Ohio State Michigan game. That'd be it. Or Ohio State game. Indiana game. Yeah. But like I said, we went, we, for some reason, I'm not looking ahead, Ohio State. And I, I, both, if people out there, both my family, half my, actually, my entire family is Ohio State fans. I'm the only Hoosier in the family. So not looking forward ahead of that game. We got to take care of business on Saturday. I think at noon again. Uh, we they just love putting us at the noon time, which is 10 o'clock here, which is a tough wake up for, yeah. for me. So. Um, but yeah, no, love the Hoosiers, love where the program's going, love Tom Allen, LEO, love each other, love that, love that saying, um, just love where the direction of the program's going, um, and Bloomington is buzzing, I will let you know that. Uh, Hoosierville is, is on something right now, that's Yes, sure. sir, yes, Basketball sir. Basketball coming back, Indiana football on the rise, can't be better than that, but now let's get into the juice of the podcast. Yes, sir. Uh, like you said, this is a master special for all the viewers out there, I know I said I wear my jersey every week, so I got my <laughs> master's hat. So that counts as my jersey since it's a bonus episode. Uh, let's let's talk about first and foremost Tiger Woods. Obviously, the winner of last year. What yep. an incredible story yep. that was. Uh, one of the um, greatest stories in all sports. His comeback, being injured for so for so long, and then him um, winning, being there with his kids and his mom. Oh. What a great story. Do you feel? Do you like his chances this weekend? So, a couple things. Starting with that first comment he said. That was one of the best. Okay, I've I've, I've cried at maybe a couple of sporting events. <laughs> I stayed in Michigan a couple years ago, um, but that last year, last year, uh, literally watching on TV like was something that I like never really witnessed. I mean, like for our generation, I mean, I grew up like I lived down in Florida, so I had the Tiger tournament uh, or the Dur- or the Doral tournament there. So I watched Tiger play, you know, when I was like, a little kid, but. We really didn't understand his dominance. We were, you know, two, three years old. Mm-hmm. He changed the way golf was played back mm-hmm. then. He is the the pendulum. Uh, you know, he is he, whatever he does. Um, you know, purses. I think as a total in the field, when Tiger played, uh, or when before Tiger played, the entire field was a million dollars. When Tiger got on tour and started winning, first place was a million dollars. He is the most influent. I would say next to Michael Jordan. 
um, one of the most influential sports figures ever. I mean, mm -hmm. they, which is why he has made golf for a lot of people fun to watch. You know what I mean? Like when you think of, when you think of golf, what's the first thing you get? Tiger. Tiger. So, but anyway, back to that point. When he hugged, hugged his kids at the uh, at the end there, that was really that made me tear up a little bit, yeah. especially with his dad, you know, and everything. Yeah, so. panning from the his first Masters mm -hmm. win where he went and hugged his dad, mm -hmm. and then the last year when mm -hmm. he went up and hugged his son, it 100%. was it was uh, one of those chilling moments for oh, sure. Yeah. And Tiger is personifies golf in general. I mean, yeah. if you're even if you don't know or don't know much about golf or no, watch golf at all, you know about Tiger Woods. Oh yeah, and that's just that's just the person he is on and off the. The game and how what he's done to move the game forward. I mean, his mm -hmm. Nike sponsorship oh. is one of the most craziest things you'll ever hear about. If mm -hmm. you don't know about it, go look it up because mm -hmm. his it's a lifetime deal. It's ridiculous. It's right up with LeBron's Nike mm -hmm. deal. Like mm -hmm. it's it's one of those crazy things. He's moved the sport so much forward mm -hmm. and built the game where it is now. And that's why the Masters is one of the most watched sporting events right now because Tiger isn't mm -hmm. in. Because there's more people, uh, so many more people watched the Masters last year when Tiger was in. The oh, yeah. no doubt about it. Jimmy, he's, Jimmy what do you think? Um, He's been able to kind of take his punishment with all the oh yeah the personal issues that he had yeah. and obviously everybody all the he lost the American women when what happened with them came out and then the DUI but he's like with the opposite of most athletes mm -hmm. where they go away and they can never come back he's mm -hmm. actually came back mm -hmm. and everybody was happy for him last year mm -hmm. I, I talked about it when I was on the radio I don't watch golf I didn't watch the Masters but I saw that moment so mm -hmm. he's kind of he he's reminiscent of Kobe because Kobe did the same yep. thing. The early allegations in Denver yep. change the number, lose the afro, and then everybody <laughs> yeah, exactly. everybody knows you as Black Mamba after that. Yeah, so. exactly, exactly. But um, no, Nico, like you were saying, um, his chances this week. I mean, he's Tiger Woods. You can't ever came out of this tournament. He is he is the like pendulum when it comes to this tournament. I mean, I would I would put him right up there. I mean, he's number one. I put Phil right up there. If he's in contention, that's going to be good. I like Tiger. I mean, who I would if I was a bed man, would I take Tiger? Probably not, but guess what? I'm one of the, one of those people also said, "Don't take Tiger last year; it could happen." Um, so he last year's tournament, yeah. If you guys want to watch, maybe a ten minute highlight was the greatest display of course knowledge I've ever seen in my life. If you go to hole twelve, which is where um, the famous hole twelve, it's par three. It's like 160. One yards. of the most beautiful. One of the most holes beautiful. Yeah, you know, like in golf. It's, yeah, it's, it's 160 yards. It's a nine iron for these guys. Mm -hmm. It's an easy wedge. Problem is, it's in the bowl and the wind swirls. Mm -hmm. And um, if you look at the, they played in threesomes because the weather was coming in last year. So it was two threesomes. I think in front of them it was Poulter, Kepka, um, and I think somebody else. I forget the other guy. Yeah. Two of them put it in. Maybe Finau. No, Finau played with Tiger. Yeah. Two of them put it in the water in the group in front of Tiger. And then he saw that. And then I don't know if you notice if you look at the if you look at the highlights. Tiger goes up to the tee on 12 again with uh, Molinari, who's leading by two, and um, Fina, who's right in contention. F Once Molinari put in the water, Tiger did what Jack did. There was a bunker right up there, and he hit a nine iron. He hit it hard, and I mean that guy hit it hard. Molinari went for the pin, hit it in the water. Fina went for the pin, hit it in the water. Tiger hit it on the green, two putted, changed the entire tournament. Mm -hmm. Because 13 is a birdie hole for these guys. It's a 510 yard, red article. It's a par four and a half for these mm -hmm. guys. Um, but you know, unbelievable win. I like his chances, and yeah, kind of he's, he's plus four thousand. So that's that's a pretty good, pretty good. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, if you wanted to kind of, if you think you can make money on an underdog, plus four thousand is pretty good. For yeah, you. and that's a really good underdog, especially like if, if you if you're a fan of betting on things for oh, yeah. like, great stories. Yeah. Why not pick? Tiger again. Oh, yeah. yeah and a, a tournament this size, like the favorites are plus 900, so plus 4,000 is a big enough return so that yeah. you can win a little bit more money than if you just go chop. Because obviously, plus 900 is still a good amount of money, but plus yeah. 4,000 kind of changes things. Yeah, he's 35. It looks like he's like 35 to 1 on CBS, mm -hmm. which right behind Jordan Spieth, who I won't get into, he's a head case. Yeah, Poor well, guy. I mean, we'll another head case. Let's let's uh, parlay into that. Uh, talking about Brooks Kepka a little bit. Oh. Blake, Blake, or Blake Lee, your runner up, Brooks Kepka. Yeah, pardon mm -hmm. my take. Shout well, out, pardon my take. One of the most entertaining guys on the course by far. Um, a lot of people don't like him uh, just because of his attitude, but he's a damn good golfer. You know, he's brought definitely that um, that kind of cockiness back into the sport. He's like a real a life bit. Happy Gilmore almost, because yeah. he's like a bad boy and doesn't do anything yeah. that you're supposed to. Doesn't like playing. Golf well, actually, you know, we'll talk about him in a minute. Shambo. We'll talk about him in a minute. He's been the bad boy who gets a yeah. country mile. But Brooksy, 
does definitely has that attitude about him. He's like a rock star almost, yeah. where he knows he just mm-hmm. wants to be different because he's a, he wants to be an asshole. Yeah. He doesn't want to be liked. You know, I. I I like him. I like his. I like his demeanor. You know, I follow him on Instagram. Like, love everything about him. The one thing I kind of gave me a little bit of a um, step back was this uh, U.S. Open this past year was at Wingfoot, and that was one of the first. It was the second major play without fans. The first. Oh no, no, I'm sorry. This was at the PGA this year. First major without fans. No fans. Mm-hmm. Uh, over in, uh, I played the golf course at Harding Park. Yep. Um, fun course. Huge trees, you can't hit, you gotta hit it straight as an arrow. It's done runways every time. DJ is tied for the lead going into um, the final day, yep. and Brooks is right there. Mm. And Brooks says a comment to the media like, "Oh, like, you know, I really like my chances. DJ is gonna fall apart, like not something along the lines like that." But basically, he said, "You know, like I don't like DJ's chances." Now, first of all. DJ has won, I think, over 26 times. I don't know, Jimmy, you have to look that one up. But I think 27. I mean, he's right up there pushing 30. Yeah, this guy's number one player in the world. Mm-hmm. And for Brooksy, who's won four majors, two PGAs, two, two U.S. Opens, to say kind of like that, that kind of gave me a little bit of – and they're buddies too. It's mm-hmm. not like, look, you know, I mean, it's one thing to say if you don't like the guy. Um, 21. 21. 21 tournaments. 21 tournaments. There it is. 21 tournaments for DJ. Uh, number one player in the world for a while. He's been up and down right there with Rory. Um, you know, but I, I, I like Brooksy. Um, that's what Tiger calls him, Brooksy. Um, but, you know, we'll see. I mean, he was right there last year. Right there last year. Um, just some bounces didn't go his way. Didn't close down the stretch. Um, but you'll hear it over and over again. And if you watch this weekend, the, the Masters tournament doesn't start till back down on Sunday. Yeah, so. it's, it's one of those tournaments where you got to play consistent throughout, and then when it gets to Sunday, you got to be on your best. You that's how you, best. Get to, that's how, you get, that's how you get to that green jacket. Yeah. It's entertaining up until – it's kind of like March Madness. It's entertaining through yeah. the rounds, but then there's an added level of intensity on the last day. Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. 100%. Yeah, with Dustin Johnson being the number one in the world too, I mean it's I – don't, I don't know the numbers on that, but I think it's very rare the number one um, player in the world – Usually wins the Masters. It's hard. It, it's, it's very, hard. very hard because the field usually comes to play. And, it always comes to play. And this is one thing I wanted to tell you guys that you know, for a lot of the people that you know understand golf and follow golf, you know, they play four ma- they play four majors a year. They play they play you know the Masters usually is the, the first one. Mm-hmm. It's kind of the rite of passage. The springtime, it's our Super Bowl, mm-hmm. um, and then after that, you know, they change it up. Now it's PGA, British Open, U.S. Open. Every single one of the rest of the majors, they play a different venue every year. Every they don't play a back to back venue every year. You know, you obviously have the Staples, the Pebble Beaches, the Oakmonts, blah blah blah. But the Masters is the one tournament where year in year out, you know that there's going to be certain guys up there. There's you know they get at least they're going to be up there. They may not win, but they're going to be right there. Um, and you know, Tiger's one of them. Um, Mickelson. Mickelson really? used to be. I think he's getting a little old. But he, but Jimmy, to your point, probably from about you know. Middle of two thousands, all the way up to about middle. He, he's yeah. the main Tiger rival that I remember. Mm-hmm. When Tiger, oh yeah, Tiger was the guy every weekend. Mickelson was always chasing. Him. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. It's one of those things where like it's it's big time players come up in big time mm-hmm. moments. Like it's it's we see it on all sports. Mm-hmm. Uh, LeBron making it to coming up in the playoffs, making oh, yeah. the finals every year. Oh, yeah. um, Tiger in the Masters and always coming to play, never really ever like missing a cut, and usually making it to Sunday. I can't, believe, I can't believe you see. I can't believe you didn't say Michael Jordan. That's the real player. What Mine's already out. Yeah, true. What about your guy who doesn't lose on clay in tennis? Oh, we're right. like, no, 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 no. You can just have a favorite kind of course that you like to play, and it. The dolls in that's, the clay. That's kind of the having the same venue is kind of the other huge added huge. intrigue to the to the tournament. You know, what, one of the cool things about the Masters too is the amateur side. Um, yep. The amateur mm-hmm. is a yep. huge thing. Um, there's a lot of great, great, great talent out there this year. We have John Augustine from uh, the United States. Abel Gallegos, Argentina, Yuxin Lin, China, um, Lucas Michel, Michael, maybe, I don't know, Australia, Andy Ogletree, uh, James uh, Segru. I don't know if you know a whole lot about the amateurs, mm-hmm. um, but it is definitely a great tradition that the Masters constantly oh, has every year. Um, do you, do you uh, like any, any of those guys to make it to Sunday, possibly, and um, and give a push to their money? I, it's very, very rare that they're probably going to be yeah. in that final cut, but maybe they might make it to Sunday um, and have a, have a chance at the run. You know that's a good point. Um, you know the the Masters. I, I think there's just too many stars just mm-hmm. in the in the field. However, some of the notables that have come out of there. Uh, you look at guys like Matt Kuchar. Um, I'm trying to think who else that was there. I think just. I mean, not in the Masters, but Justin Rose. You look at mm-hmm. a guy like 
um, Victor Hovland, who is the young star next to um, one of my boys named Matt Wolf. Not one of my boys, one of my boys' boys. Uh, but Matt Wolf is uh, never used to one house championship of Oklahoma State. Um, but you know, those guys are turned, uh, now have turned pro. Um, you know, a lot of these guys you won't hear about. I mean, obviously you'll hear them throughout the week that you know they get presented at the end of the, with the green jacket. They get a um, they're they're in Butler cabin when they have the presentation. Um, but you know, it's it's um, a great tradition, and that's what you'll hear a lot. Of the Masters a tradition. Mm -hmm. Everything's about tradition. It's the same thing over and over again. Um, and the, one of the great traditions is is the amateurs. Is is the mm -hmm. fact that um, amateurs get the opportunity to play. Um, you know, will they qualify in Latin America, overseas in China, overseas in Europe, mm -hmm. um, or even here in America? Um, you know, it's a, it's really, really, really become a worldly event, and that's what I really like about the Masters. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if if those new uh, golf fans, especially like, do you, there's people to look forward to, and mm -hmm. and the Amateur side, like, there's always people coming up out of that. Like you yeah. said, Kuchar's from there, and there's a lot of great talent that always comes from the Amateur side. And mm -hmm. That's always a fun look into the future because I mean, what I mean, golf is one of the most fun sports to bet on. I think oh, yeah. I, I think there's there's so much you can bet on. You can bet on per hole. What what uh what like you can bet on per hole. Too. Yeah, you, you can bet. <laughs> That's crazy. You, you can bet on a player if he if he or she or whatever is going to um, par the hole or birdie the hole, whatever it may be. You can do stupid bets. There's top like, lefty. Uh, top, top lefty. That's a good one. Top senior player. I would I bet Bubba on the top lefty. Five region. So top USA player. Top international player. Wow, that'll be good. I, Lefties, there was a time period from, I think, 2000 to 2014 or something like that. Lefties won seven of the of the, tw of the uh, 14 oh, Masters. Oh, wow. So I think it was like Mike Weir in 03, Phil won three, Bubba won two. Um, so that is a uh, lefty. It's a lefty's paradise back there because they can, they can cut the corners on some of these tee shots. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Let's talk about Bubba a little bit. I mean, one uh, of the... One of, one of the First Masters I remember watching was Bubba's win. Mm -hmm. I remember watching which him. one in 20, 20, first 2012 one. where he hooked it out of the yeah, trees. Yeah, hooked it out of the where trees. Yeah. It was a playoff. Yeah, with, a with playoff, right? yeah. yeah. I remember that. That was one of my first ones. Uh, do you like his chances? I, I got to see him live in person at the Phoenix Open, the Wasted uh, Management. The Wasted Management. Open. The Wasted Management. Open. Not the Wasted Management. Open. The yeah. Wasted Management Open, which is the biggest shit show on golf. Um, if you ever heard about that? Go look it up. I've been there a few times. The Masters is on one side, and the Wasted Management is on the complete opposite side. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's 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 class, and then there's <laughs> trash, and yeah. it's the Wasted Management yeah. Open. Yeah. But I got to see Bubba play play at that. Um, he he's definitely on the older side, like we said with Phil. Yeah. Um, do you think one of these older guys? We think Bubba. We think Kuchar. You think? Um, Phil Nicholson, one of these older guys, has a shot um, at making a run. I guess we'd put Tiger in that older generation as well. They'll be up there. They won't be with all the guns. I mean, here, here's the thing. You know, Bubba still bombs the ball. Um, Kudra hasn't hit very far. Uh, Phil but still bombs it. But you got to have, their, you know, you can get away with tee shots at, at Augusta. You can get away with, you know, that. But you got to be able to putt. And if, and some of the, besides Tiger, I mean, Tiger's the best putter I've ever seen, minus Jack Nicklaus. I mean, I think Tiger's the best putter, period. Um, you got to have, if you look at the week before, um, who they, what they play last week? Was it the C CJ Cup? Yeah, no. it was, I think it was the CJ Cup. Um, I got I to look. Um, but the um, the golf course is a second shot and where you're going to miss the ball. Mm -hmm. You can put yourself in a bad, some bad spots out there. Um, I do, I, do I like Bubba? Do I like Phil? I mean, I could say, yeah, I like them. Would I bet on them in Vegas? Probably not. Um, more, but, more good, more but, good but just would be a really good story. Yeah. I mean, if they're up there, if they're up there. Like, if they're in contention, I would, I'd throw some money on them. I mean, but it would have to be like in contention, back nine kind of deal. Mm -hmm. Would I take them? You know, I, what, what's Bubba here? Out, mm -hmm. outright, he's plus thirty eight hundred. Plus thirty eight hundred. And Tiger was plus four thousand. Yeah. So Are you giving Bubba a better chance than Tiger? Yeah. And then wow, uh, Phil. I just saw Mickelson. Hold on. Uh, he Mickelson's plus seven thousand. Jeez. Yeah. See, Phil. See, the problem with Phil is that he's just too old. But but but, boy, would that be a story? Oh man. Oh. Had a tiger win last year. Oh my god. And then Phil c come back this year. I think that's that's a storybook ending. I think golf. Oh my be, god. Or just. I mean, the game is already taking off. I think, but. Yeah. That's, that's even going to add to it. I think one one of the people I think is my sleeper. Um, is oh, Colin Colin Marikawa. So that's who. That's that, one of my sleepers. I, he's I'm, got his this year. He won his this year. Do I think he's gonna win again? Another major? Hey, yeah. 
But he got his this year. He You don't think he can win another one? I mean, he had a great, beautiful drive on whole season yeah, way back when. Like, it was crazy. Yeah, yeah, it was PGA Championship. PGA yeah, championship, yeah, yeah, Jimmy, if you look at that that highlight, that is a – that is, I mean, that was just on a – Was road. that one of your plays of the week? That was the first ever play of the week. Frozen. He hit that yeah. on a frozen rope. I'm watching that. And there's like six or seven guys within like one or two shots. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you got DeChambeau up there. I think you had Rom up there. DJ was up there. And this guy stepped to the 16. Hits this ball right on the nails, just nukes it right at the green. Perfect bounce rolls up, and I, I was listening to him when he was in the interview. He's like, "I knew it was good, but I knew it was that good." <laughs> um, but you know that that course, um, that whole event was just really, really interesting. I would say. I mean, look, he won fair and square. I'm not going to take away from his win. Um, just different. It's a different. It was a different atmosphere. Yeah, especially you with know no I mean? fans there. That was the first tournament, like you said, first major without any fans there. And I think that adds an aspect to it. I think because he is on the younger side, he's only 21 years old. That helped a little yeah. because I mean, in high school and in, before in amateur, you don't play around many people, mm-hmm. so you're not you're used to having not as many people around well, you and everything. Like crowds that. don't form at the Colorado High School Golf Championship. <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> um, the, I will say though that you were right up there just with Marikawa. That maybe don't have as much glory, but have definitely won. Uh, Hovland's up there. Mm-hmm. I like um, I like uh, uh, what's his name, Matthew Wolf. I, I like those guys. I can they win? Yeah, they can win if they get some breaks for them. They can get they can win. Um, well, I think they win. Probably not. I got my picks, but we'll get into that in a minute. But um, I look. I mean, hey, it's a different golf course. This sh- I mean, it's the same golf course, but it's also a different. Atmosphere. I was, you don't have the Sunday roars. I was gonna talk. Yeah. Like, is it gonna be different the time of year? Because now it's not April. It's November. I'm looking at the weather now. It looks like it's gonna be wet and kind of rainy the yeah. entire time. Yeah. So does that play favors the bombers? Because now you're not gonna like the guys who are used to playing the course that have played in multiple Masters. Now you're gonna have to deal with different weather, and you're yeah. not gonna have the clear middle of the week and then go like. Uh, Sundays, I can all, I always kind of remember them being a little bit rainy, but now it looks like it's going to be pretty bad the whole time. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, look, weather always plays a factor there. Um, if the golf course is wet, it's going to be a it's going to be a dark fest. I mean, there's been years. I think Spieth won a one year at like three or four under. I mean, it, the wind didn't stop the whole tournament. It started it started on Monday and just kept going all the way through Sunday. Mm-hmm. And that's where the gusts got so hard because you know, the back nine through the pines, you don't see the wind. Um, but you know, if it be, if Jimmy, if you're saying it's going to be rainy, it is going to be a dark fest because these guys are going to, they're not going to get very much roll on the, um, on the fairways, but they're going to be throwing darts at the pin. Mm-hmm. I will say this though, Augusta National, they have an unlimited budget. They can, yeah. they can suck the, the water right out of those greens. Yeah. They redo the greens every year. I mean, yeah, it's they, ridiculous. They make sure it's up to, up to par for sure. Um, if it, they got frost on it. They got subheated things under the green. You melt right off. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's definitely a different feel to it at all. Like, yeah, completely yeah. no fans. Like I said, it's not usually in March, right? Is it, is it usually it's in normally March? Easter. April. April. It's, like, it's right normally after, around Easter, and then yep. it's... Um, right after it's, March Madness. Now yeah. it's like Thanksgiving. It's, so. it's definitely a completely different feel to it. I know we all missed it during quarantine. I mean, that's... I was watching oh. the highlights of last year's oh, tournament. Go. Yeah, it, it was. It's one of those tough things. I, I mean, how else do you get through uh, football ending to training camp? You go March Madness. You go the wrestling there tournament, and then Masters. There you go. Exactly. Hey, oh, and then you got then you go right you into get, ice hockey. Yeah, and then hockey playoffs. and basketball. You, yeah. that's when free agency kind of picks up. Yeah, and then preseason, obviously. Yeah. No, I mean, it, it, in the the golf world, really picks up in the summer, um, but the. Masters is kind of the tournament for majority of America where everybody's like, okay, let me go grab my clubs, let me go dust them off. Mm-hmm. Here we go back to the driving range after the tournament's over. Yeah, we, every I, year. Yeah, I mean, I picked you up from the airport today because you were coming back from Florida and we drove by a golf course and there was snow on the ground. People were <laughs> yeah. playing, man. It yeah. must be Masters week because yeah, there's people exactly. playing in snow. 30 oh. degree blowing snow. Oh, let's go play. Exactly. No, never a bad time to get the clubs out. But, I mean, <laughs> like, like like you said previously, let's talk about the bad boy of the course, Bryson DeChambeau. Oh. L thick boy as we he's as as he's known by. I mean, the dude is is a loose cannon. ESPN had a story yesterday come out yeah. and say, can Augusta uh, Augusta National contain Bryson DeChambeau? I mean, can, uh, can he? Do, I mean, the here dude dude's go. a loose cannon. He's, he likes to have go. his fun, man. Here we go. Um, he, he's he's high. He's must watch TV also. Oh, oh he's he's one to watch on Friday, Saturday, Sunday for sure. Yeah. 
Um, I'll, I'll tell you this. So, look, I'll get to Bryson in a second, but I want to talk about why this relates to Bryson. So, in 1997, Tiger absolutely dismantled the golf course. Mm -hmm. I think Jimmy. I don't know what the I don't know what the the the, the final leader was. I don't know what he was under, but he murdered the golf course. Augusta National did some changes to the course to a tiger proof it mm -hmm. because he's hitting the ball so flipping far. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a video I, I saw yesterday. Two thousand waste management on the rate eighteen, he hit a drive over the water, over the bunker, three twenty six carry in two thousand. Yeah, but oh, I it was, yeah. it was the whole seventeen. Oh, 18, that, 18, oh, 18. Are you sure it wasn't the it, it was eighteen, I'll show you the I'll show you the video. Seventeen's a short four. Okay. Um anyway, Tiger murdered the golf course. He came out and said, Yeah, it was it was I don't know why everybody was like saying it's so hard. I just hit driver wedge in every hole. <laughs> I mean, besides the part threes, he hit driver wedge in every hole. Everybody's got driver seven iron versus the driver pitching wedge in. Mm -hmm. So the dust, Augusta National came out and redid the golf, not redid the golf course, but lengthened it. Fast forward to now. Here we go. We got Mr. Long Drive over here. <laughs> he Shambo who looks like he's about to play on, you know, you know, the Remax World World Long looks Drive. Looks like he could be a D lineman there. Yeah, oh my god. Yeah. He's, got, he's like eight protein shakes a day. You know. <laughs> Do I think if I'm a bet man, do I do I bet on on DeChambeau? No, I I just don't like him this week. I think all eyes are going to be on him. The reason why I liked him, I picked him at the U.S. Open. Here's why I liked him because he had such an advantage mm -hmm. with the length. You know, the the golf course was all right in front of you at Wingfoot. They had tough greens, but he 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 said you know in the presser on that that week in Wingfoot, he said I don't care if I hit the ball 370 yards, you know, 50 yard, you know, 20 yards right. He says, I don't care. I'm going to hack it up there, get it on the green. And guess what? He was the only other person under par that week. Masters, though, and I, and I, everybody loves to talk about the Bombers. It's always been a second shot golf course. Zach Johnson, one of the shortest hitters on tour, laid up in every par five that week. In the 07, he won. Mm -hmm. um, you look at guys, I mean, you don't look at, Tiger's not the longest hitter on tour. Was he the longest hitter when he, when he won? Yeah, but that's Tiger. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you look at guys like Mike Weir, he doesn't hit the ball very far, he won. Um, you know, you look at guys like, oh, don't get me started on that Masters. Danny Willett, who doesn't hit the ball very far, and he's dropped on the face of the earth. He's a short hitter. Mm -hmm. It's a second shot golf course. It's a putting course. Where are you going to miss the ball? He can hit it on 13, 400 yards into the 14th hole, but if he puts himself in a bad spot, it, you know, it doesn't matter. You got to know the course. You got to put yourself in good spots. You miss the ball in bad spots, you're not going to be there. And if DeChambeau hits the ball 400 yards, you know, over everything, but puts himself in the pine needles. I don't care. I'd rather be 200 yards in the fairway with an iron in my hand and the needles. Yeah, golf is one of those sports where I mean, you can have all the power in the world, but yeah. like if you can't chip and you can't, if you yeah. can't um, putt the putt well, it's not going to um, favor you at all. Especially oh, the yeah. Masters. I mean, the Masters is one of those tournaments where it's known for its um, its fairways and how yeah. how to get to the green, mm -hmm. not necessarily the first shot off the tee. And and DeChambeau, like you said, he's he's Power hitter, man. The dude's an animal, but I don't know if it'll favor him. I I, I would love. I think it'd be. A, I think it'd be a lot more entertainment to to Sunday if he was in that final. Oh, like, would it be? It'd be last, watch TV. Last yeah. two uh, groups with Tiger, say oh or the, or DJ. I mean, that'd be must watch. DJ, Bo, so. McIlroy, and Tiger Woods. Oh, last three, man. final group. No, it's not gonna happen. But who who is it? McIlroy, DJ, Bo, Tiger, and, and Tiger. Yeah, McIlroy's going to complete the Grand Slam, and that's where he's going for. This is the last term he's got to win last major. Um, I don't like Rory this week either. I'll tell you my pick. I don't, I don't like everybody this week. Plus so um, fourteen hundred. Not like a lot, a lot of plus fourteen hundred. Yeah, he's a he's one of the higher guys. DJ Bo's plus nine hundred, but McElroy's plus fourteen hundred. Wow, that is, dude, Ma, dude, McElroy, twenty eleven shot 80, 81 on the final day. He after that, Augusta just got in his head. He could. I mean, even uh, a couple years ago when Patrick Reed won final group again. Had toe to toe with Patrick Reed and he got out outplayed. Do I think Rory has a chance this week? Yeah, I have a chance. He has a chance this week. I mean, he got a chance every week. He tees it up. Yeah. But um, he's not one of my picks. Um, I'm gonna tell you my picks. Yeah, let's 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 go Let with your picks here. now because you literally have said no to every single person we've talked about. Let's see. Said no to yeah. Tiger, no to Bryson. All right, you ready? No to Brooks. You ready? You ready? No to Bubba. You ready? Who do you, who do you got? All right, all right, all right, all right. Number one pick. Number one pick. Um, I like JT, Justin okay, Thomas. That's, that's fair. I like JT. That's fair. Uh, Justin Thomas coming in. I think he is not the favorite. 
CBS Golf has him at twelve to one. Yeah, plus twelve um, plus twelve hundred. Yep, yeah, yeah. They have DeChambeau as a favorite at eight to one. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, another guy that was right there at the end that didn't finish, but it was I, I just love him. Nobody's gonna talk about him. Xander, Xander Shoffley, mm-hmm. fourteen to one here, right ahead of Brooks at sixteen to one. Uh, yeah, and they're same odds on Fanduel. So the same odds like, on Fanduel. Okay, yeah. So yeah. I like I I like oh, I like Xander. Xander's good pick. Xander's good pick. Yeah, because I saw he won the. Um, uh, Waste Manager opened two years ago, yeah. I believe, and I remember watching that. And he was he was playing a really good game. He was playing oh, yeah. really smart. Um, the seventeenth hole, especially, like he placed it perfectly. He, he's yeah. uh, he's definitely a good sleeper to pick. Yeah, I like I, I like Alexander as kind of my sleeper. Another guy I like as my sleeper. He won the Safeway Open a couple weeks ago with a packed field, and I mean packed. JT was right there. Um, is is Patrick Cantley? Patrick Cantley is what's he at? Oh my gosh, he's all the way done. No way. Twenty five hundred plus twenty five hundred. Yep. Yeah, I, I I like Cantley. He's oh he's twenty five to one here. Yeah, yep yep twenty five to one. I like him. Um, I would stay and I think he's got when he's on. I don't boys he on. He can. I mean he stripes the ball mm-hmm. and I mean he stripes it. I like him. Um, and then kind of my dark horse sleeper that just really likes Augusta, just really enjoys being there. Um, and I I've picked him a lot and I'm still and he's. He's proven me. He's proven me right a bunch of the times. Is um, is Jason Day? Mm-hmm. I do like Jason Day. He, and he's only won one. He's been around for a minute too. Yeah, and he, he, like, I feel like he's always around the top top. He's the he's boys. right there too. He's right there too. Um, picks that I would stay away from. The picks that I would stay away from. Uh, Bryson at eight to one. I just don't like him. I, I he's the favorite. He's just, Jeremy is a traditionalist. I am he, on the anti Bryson. I've never <laughs> liked him. You sound like my father. Yeah, I, <laughs> Patrick Mahomes shouldn't flex after every touchdown he scores. <laughs> keep, keep, well, keep it golf. He, keep golf, golf. Yeah, well, he Patrick Mahomes will get there. He has the right to do it. I don't know about Deschambeau yet. Deschambeau's gonna win before he can do that. Rory, I don't like Rory. He's got the issues with Augusta. He'll be right there, but I don't think he's gonna win. Um, I don't like Tiger either. I just, I, just, I don't know. I like him in April. I'm gonna call right now. I like him in April. I don't like him right do, now. Do you think if it was in April completely that he'd be the favorite? No, he wouldn't be the favorite. He'd be right there though. He'd uh-huh. be right there. Um, and then another guy I don't like that. I, I don't know why everybody loves picking him. He's the top five machine, Tony Fino. He's not gonna win. He's not gonna win. You know what? I hope. By Sunday, you guys can call me out on the podcast when you guys go back on Monday about how bad these picks were. <laughs> Jimmy, you can even play back just to just to really yeah. if you win, just give it to me. But that that I just don't like Tony Fina, twenty five to one. Yeah, but, that, I'm I mean, about uh, John Ram because he's plus nine fifty. Oh, yeah, and he's gonna, he, yeah, he's he he's, he's a good pick. Okay, he, that that man that man, when he like again he's a can't lead. when he's on, he is tough. He is tough. At Eleven to one. He's I think he's no one playing in the world. Uh, he uh, might be. Okay, he's, he's, DJ, he's in the he's in the top three odds. Yeah, okay. He's Him, DJ, Deschambeau, yeah. and DJ are the top three okay. odds on Fanduel. Okay. Uh, All right, Nate. Let's yeah. see what you. I mean, for me, man, I I love the good stories, dude. I love like I'm a big bubble guy because mm-hmm. I, I I know you and you and I both Jeremy swing left handed. Okay. Uh, so I like the lefties. Twenty eight to one. I, I it's 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 a good story. I don't know if Bubba will win. I think if I'm betting, he's got better odds than 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 Day does. So I'll yeah, that it's it's a tough one. I mean, I I love to see Tiger win again. I, I would love to shed another tear again this year <laughs> watching Sunday yeah. and watching Tiger win. I want Tiger with uh, fans. I don't think he's going to win, though. I don't know, man. I feel like this might be Deschambault's year. I don't oh know why. I, I, I think it'd be... I think it'd be so so like it wouldn't be good for golf. Like, in the sport in general, but it'd be great for ratings. It'd be great for everyone. Oh, yeah. Like, People are going to tune in because they shambo the person he is. Oh, yeah. Um, I I don't know why, but I think Stay Shambo might have himself. It's, it's his time. Um, like we said with, um, I think it was DJ, he won, he, won, he won something already. He won a major. And then also Mark Hall, I think, is a sleeper. Mark Hall is my sleeper. Mar- Mark Hall is a sleeper. I like that one. I think Mark Hall is my big sleeper. I think him and, and Champ might, are, might be right there, one and two. Cameron um, Champ, that boy hits the ball. Far. He, he he's he's a stud too. Like it's far. There's such it's such a great field, man. I think I think the final two groups. I think Brooks will be in the final two groups. Mm-hmm. I think it'll be Brooks. I think DJ will be there. I think JT will be there. Um, I think I'm gonna say Mari Call was in there too because I think that's my sleeper. I think he'll be in the final two groups on Sunday. And I think Tiger's gonna be in there as well. I think those are my fi- like final two groups. But you know if um, that those are I mean those are look I mean if Tiger's in the final group I'm I mean no matter what if he's must watch TV must watch TV yeah. Another guy that I, I, I do like, and um, he's a big name, and he's 
he's really not been playing well right now. But boy, a win win here would just completely turn around his his year. Is uh, is Ricky Ricky Fowler? Yeah. He's at sixty six to one. Um, he, I don't know, but he's just this. There's just something about this tournament and something about these players that when they get to Augusta, it's just different. I mean, I I, I can't really explain it. It's like when you play in certain football teams, when you play in certain basketball arenas, when you get to certain moments, they're just you know it's different. Mm -hmm. When guys get to Augusta, they just play differently. Mm -hmm. Ricky Fowler is one of them, right there. He, I mean, I can't tell you how many. What I want to see Ricky Fowler's best finish here in. Um, What's it called? The Masters? I think it's like T2. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's right there. Ricky Fowler, best finish here. Um, but he is right... I think it was one year he was top five in all of majors. I remember that, yeah. Because yeah. he, he won the Waste Management Open this year. And I remember everyone being high on him and being like, um, it's going to be his year. He's mm -hmm. going to win a major. It may not be the Masters, but maybe PGA, whatever it may be. Um, he might get on, get on a hot streak too. I think he's definitely a sleeper to look at. Um, he's yeah. one of those guys where... Uh, it's fun to watch, I think, in my opinion. Yeah. He, he's the orange um, hats. Orange the hats. Yeah. He, he's he comes with that something colorful every year. Yeah. And he he's not eccentric, but he's he's a, he's a clean guy that mm -hmm. can hit the ball well. Oh yeah, he can hit the ball well. He's a good putter, really good putter. Yeah. Sneaky good putter. Uh, Masters best finish second on 2018. Mm -hmm. PGA T third in 2014. U.S. Open T two 2014. Mm -hmm. I think T five in 2014 for PGA or I'm sorry. Um, British Open. He's one of those that also, like you said, you just never know. Look, it's going to be a heck of a tournament. It's going to be, the ratings are going to be through the roof. The one thing that I'm do going to miss, though, is what makes the Masters the best of the, of the they call them the patrons. Mm -hmm. the, the, fan, mm -hmm. the, the fans, uh, the Masters, you call them the patrons or the spectators. Um, there's nothing like Sunday Augusta Roars. And there's nothing like it, I don't think, anything in sports because Normally in a sporting event, everybody's all in the same area. Mm -hmm. You know, you got different, you know, places in the golf course where it just, you know, I my dad's been there, my grandpa's been there. He tells me there's like certain bowls on the back nine where it just erupts. Mm -hmm. 12, 13 is one of them. 15, 16 where Tiger had that famous chip in. That's another one. Just certain places that just explode. They call them the Augusta Roars or the back or Sunday Roars. They're gonna miss it this year. It's kind of sad. Yeah, with the Masters, one of the, the best things about it, in my opinion, is the roar of eighteen after someone wins. Oh yeah. It's I mean with Tiger and with Bubba and the different things and we watch and the picture of him fist bumping in the air and the crowd going nuts. Oh, that was him, nuts. And it's one of the best pictures in, in sports and sports yeah. in general too. Uh, it's definitely gonna be missed. I I'm, I'm interested to see how they um, do it all because I think maybe the green jacket ceremony might be a little bit different this yeah, year yeah. with it all. Maybe they have it outside. I don't know how that's gonna look. It usually is outside, but it's good. I think it'll still be kind of the same. But um, the, it's just there's just gonna be really no fans, which is yeah, the, it's, the it's, sad it's, part. It's sad. It's um, like you said, like it's one of those sports that it's a bucket or one of the events that's bucket list item for so many people. It's a bucket list item on mine as well. Number one like, for the, me. like the Masters is. It's one of those sports where it's it's so incredible to watch on TV, mm -hmm. but being there in person, it's it's life changing. It's life changing. It's something that you'll remember and tell your grandkids about. It's, oh. it's like it's seeing a person like Tiger Woods at the Masters, or seeing Phil, or seeing mm -hmm. um, some of these like Bubba, or some of these guys who have won in years past. Oh, like yeah. it's it's something that you cherish forever. Oh for yeah, sure. yeah, it is. And 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 the best thing about the Masters is the is the tradition. It's mm -hmm. the same thing. Every single year and year in and year out, no matter what happens, it's always dramatic. It's always must see TV. And even if you're just a sports fan in general, it's like it's just one of the best events there is. Mm -hmm. I mean, like Jimmy said, there's March Madness. Mm -hmm. You know, there's there's the Super Bowl. There's the NBA Finals. This is like right there with it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But um, I look. I love the Masters. I love I love just golf in general. But um, that being said, it is. We'll see. It's gonna be it's gonna be an interesting tournament. Um, it's kind of the final bow tie in twenty twenty, which is obviously everybody knows is not been the easiest year. Yeah. But hopefully twenty twenty one could be better for the, at least the golf world if we're on golf. Um, but right now it's pretty pretty nice to the Hoosiers, which I will say not so much of the Bengals and Broncos yeah. though. Jimmy, I'll I'll let you step in here uh, yeah. <laughs> with, with your picks because uh, you're, oh, yeah, you're, you're not you're not you're not the huge uh, golf guy, but you like the little eccentric stuff. So yeah, yeah, Jimmy, yeah. I know Jimmy can make a quick buck or two I mean, this weekend. I, I could. I don't yeah. bet any of my own money, but I should have won some people money with some of my picks. Um, my beat of the week from this week's episode was Brooks Kepka at plus sixteen hundred, and now I'm, as I'm looking at it. 
John Ram, and especially if you're like not gonna put in a bet before the tournament, mm-hmm. he'd be one to look at where yeah. he is uh, towards the end and maybe put some money down on him. He, I looked it up. He's tied for second in the world uh, with Justin Thomas right now, uh, right behind Cantlay. He's like three strokes, three three points behind. Yeah, the the, the world points. Yeah. So hey, uh, Kepka was T five last week at the uh, Houston Open mm-hmm. um, with the final round of eight under. Going to the weekend, DJ at eleven under. Right, to, I, I, that's a good pick, Jimmy. I, I, I look. I don't like Brooks, but I know you're a Brooks fan, and I appreciate that. That's good I'll pick. always pardon my take. That's the only reason. <laughs> anybody who could be entertaining on there, I'll start listening. Fair. I don't. I didn't like Dion for a while, and then he's been on the last few weeks. That's so fair. It, that's fair. It can change people's. So, opinions. so just Brooks. Give me your top four. Give me your top four. Uh, I mean, off the odds. Don't even just off the odds. Yeah, because you're not a very. You don't really know no, the players right. and everything. Give, just what odds do you like? I mean, McElroy, he's a name that I know. Plus okay. 1,400. That's, you know, plus 1,400 for a guy that I okay. think can win okay. is, is good Solid for me. Pick. Um, and then, I mean, probably Tiger or Phil, just because, of, like, like I said, the, it's, a legacy, pick. it's a legacy yeah. thing. And, yeah. and sometimes, especially in a tournament like this, when it's been in such a weird year, somebody's going to try and step up and make a, a memory out of this. Somebody's going to have to... Yeah. Have a moment of the Masters. One of those two could definitely have one. Oh yeah, I mean, I I think Tiger's got at least three to four good more tournaments left in the Masters. I think Phil's got a couple. I think he's got one. I think he's got one more shot at it. Um, but no, I mean, if if like you said, if any one of those guys won, would that be a story to tell? I'll go with Francesco Molinari too because he's it's a strong Italian name. Oh. I, can't, I can't pass Molinari. Up. What's Molinari? Ninety to one. He's playing this week. Plus ten thousand. Plus ten thousand. You know, I didn't even think about him. Boy, he fell apart last year. Uh, yeah, I do remember that. He idea. got taught a lesson, if anything, last year. We don't, you know, in golf, you can't really, like, any football, wrestling, basketball, you, you know, team teaches the other team a lesson, you know what I mean? Like, they just spank him. Tiger spanked Molinari last year. Mm-hmm. It, and it wasn't, if you watch it, on the front nine last year, Molinari spanked Tiger. Mm-hmm. But like I said, Master doesn't start the back nine. Yeah. Um, but it... But Molinari 91, okay, 90 to 1, picking him. The strong Italian name. The strong Italian, Italian name. Okay. You know, it, it, could be a, it could be a beautiful story. It, it could be a beautiful story. I'll play that to Mori on the podcast next week if he wins. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll go nuts. But yeah, so uh, I won't keep you too much longer, Jared. I know this is the Masters bonus episode. It's our second yes, bonus episode. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, any, 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 any third, third, third. Third, third now? Third, third bonus episode. USD, Birdman. Oh, you're Jeremy. right. Yep, you're right. Love Chris, the Birdman you know. podcast. Chris, Jeremy, you've been around for so long, like we said. Jeremy and Jimmy are both rocking the hoodies. Oh, I was love the hoodie. Say, yeah. Love the hoodie. We just, we, just, hoodie. we just we might have merch soon with it all. Jeremy and all the close friends and family got their uh, merch out, hopefully by now. But, love the hoodie. Um, so that'll be all on the lookout. Like, as Jimmy sure. said before the show, a fall hoodie. It's yeah. a fall Not a winter hoodie. hoodie. It, you can wear it under a heavy jacket, but if <laughs> yeah. it's definitely like an early, like early spring Fall, fall sweatshirt. Whenever, when I recommended it at a Big Ten game in November when it's about 25 degrees and sleeting. As a, no. as a layer. As a layer. <laughs> as as a layer, layer yeah. By itself, probably not. No. But, um, uh, yeah, no, I, pre- I really appreciate you guys having me on. Of course. Um, Jared, uh, you want to put out your handle out there for people to follow? Uh, I know. I just follow. You don't even follow me. Follow the pod. I love the pod. I, I love, oh, love, love, love hanging yeah. out with you guys. Love, love talking to you. I really enjoy your content. Love the Birdman episode that had me dying laughing. Some of the things I was listening out in the car. Yeah. Um, I, I just love the, um, you know, what you guys are doing. Um, and I really appreciate follow, obviously, the pod um, on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. Yeah, TikTok, you guys got it all. Yeah. Snapchat yet? Maybe not. No, no, uh, Snapchat, not, yet. Yeah. not yet. Not yet. But um, other than that, yeah, just you guys keep chugging along. You guys are doing great. Um, I do listen to you guys all the time. I watch your, I watch all your YouTubes. Um, you guys got a good thing coming. I, I know, um, boy, if the Broncos and Bengals were any any what competitive this year, Nico's worst take ever was the Broncos making the playoffs this year. I knew that one. Was okay, great. hey, yeah. he's, a, he's a Colts yeah. fan. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. A Colts Colts fan. So he's a Colts oh. fan. So if the Bengals scored twenty one and a half. On, yeah. the, on the Colts. So you, you, guys got, you guys got your own problems. So don't talk about that. We're, we're making the ninth seed, by the way. We're two and a half games away from the ninth they, seed. They extend the playoffs this year? Yeah, they extend the playoffs. To the, they, they did the regular because we're going to have nine nine seeds moving forward. They might yeah. extend it to like 16 uh, uh, this year. Hey, hey, and I will say this. Um, Phil, death taxes and Philip Rivers throwing picks in the fourth. Oh, That's, and that tackle. How would you like oh that tackle? God. Yeah, that – can we can – we, uh, the. Uh, in honor of me coming on the podcast, can we have 
bloopers of the week. Because oh that would gosh. be that would be a that good would be, that would be a new segment. New segment. Yeah, yeah. That would be number one. We I mean, can play of the week. We could do not pl- yeah, like the worst not, not top plays, play, yeah. like Sarah said. That could be blooper of the week. Bench warmer of the week. Bench warmer of the week. There you go. There you go. Really, I like Look that. at this. I'm coming up with some innovation. <laughs> blooper of the week, best warmer of the week, whatever you want to call it. Go on YouTube and look at Philip Rivers' attempt to tackle. Oh my God! I watched that game. I think I turned off the TV right after he did that. So, um, but again, love love having you guys. Thank you guys for having me on. Um, you know, obviously all the people out there. If you can't watch, if you want to watch any golf, I know it sounds so boring. Watch the back nine on Sunday, and more importantly, watch these guys. Yeah, man, Jer- Jerry, it's, it's an awesome having you on. Yep. Like I said, you listen basically all our episodes. Listen to Jimmy's. Sarah Intentions episodes as well, man. We, we're definitely going to have you on in the future because this was <laughs> a very entertaining. I don't, yeah. I don't know. Maybe we'll have you on Super Bowl week or something for a bonus be, episode yeah. or something or around those lines for sure because this or was a lot of fun. Coach Bowl play. Oh, my gosh. If that yeah. happens, that might be <laughs> absolute pandemonium. <laughs> and this, you got to check out the NFL and Hinge show coming. That'll, that'll be okay. when this episode comes out. It'll be on Sunday. Okay. But there's a Colts fan on there, so you'll have a little bit of representation. Shout, shout out to the Colts fan. Oh I don't know God. what his name yeah. is, but yeah. shout out to him. Um, but yeah, that would be, I, I will be looking into some more. I know the Unhinged Network is grinding and I really, it looks like you guys are leading the charge over yep, there. Yep, and just to plug all that real quick, Unhinged SN on Instagram, Twitter, all In, that stuff. Twitter at Network Unhinged. Um, and then, like we said, Wednesday on the Wednesday episode, we have a link tree dial. So if you click my bio, click Jimmy's bio, or click on any of our bios, you can see all of our Unhinged stuff, YouTube stuff, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. We're at, at FEOTB Pod. On all those, yep. Jeremy is at Jer Fear <laughs> on all this stuff. Yeah. Um, whatever yeah. it may be, follow him, follow us, whatever it may be. Uh, Jimmy, you got anything else? Thanks for joining us on the bench this week, and we'll catch you guys next week. Let's go. Peace. Peace. Thank you.